Men on the front lines. Men on the front lines. Men on the front lines. We call for these mighty men of valor. The Lord put a vision in my heart for a new movement amongst men in the body of Christ. The Lord says that I'm going to make champions out of those who would gather unto me. And I believe what men on the front lines will do. And I see it going into the nations. He's going to raise the bar among men. It's time for heroes to arise. I'm Robert Hodgkin, and this is Heroes Arise, Men on the Front Line social media broadcast, equipping, encouraging, and empowering you to arise as the hero, the warrior, and the champion that God created you to be. You matter, you're important, you have a key role to play for the kingdom in the earth, so thanks for joining me again this week so we can continue to pour into you, and oh, the story that I have for you this week. My guest is going to share the key he discovered to open up up the supernatural realm in his life and his ministry that took him into seeing interactions into the angelic realm to see kingdom purposes accomplished in the earth, an explosion of miracles and kingdom fruit in his life. And you can grab hold of that key as well. But just before we get to our guest, and that topic, I've got a couple quick announcements for you. Don't forget, store.heroesarise.com is up and active, and it's where you can get all your Men on the Front Lines and Heroes Arise gear. T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, it's all there. It's all for you so that everywhere you go, everyone can know that you're a man on the front lines, that you're a difference maker and a solution bringer. So go to store.heroesarise.com and get your Men on the Front Lines and Heroes Arise gear today. And secondly, we bring these shows to you. They're for free. I want you to know if you're hungry for more of them, you can go to my YouTube channel, Robert Hodgkin YouTube channel, and see dozens and dozens and dozens of more Heroes Arise episodes, plus all sorts of other great free video content. It's there for you. Go to my YouTube channel, click that subscribe button, like and share those videos. We're trying to intentionally build the YouTube channel right now because with the Facebook feed, it's great. It's a great way we interact with most of you through Facebook, but then the shows go further and further down the feed. They're harder and harder to find. You can go to Robert Hodgkin YouTube channel, it's easy to search and it's easy to find all your favorite episodes, get information and uh, and and uh, highlights that they'll let you know we've got new shows coming out. So go subscribe and share those videos. Thanks. All right, now let's get into this week's topic. Brent Borthwick. Such an honor to be here. Thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. I've had the privilege of getting to know you over the last few days mm -hmm. and I have been so stirred because of what you carry, but just as much who you are. And when I see character and revelation and gifting all married together, I get really excited because mm. it's not an either or thing. You know, we're, we're getting past the days where we look at gifting and don't pay attention to anything else. But God wants us to operate in his fullness, in his presence, in his power, which you do, but also in his personality, which you do. And I'm so grateful that you're with us, Brent. All the incredible work you guys have done around the world, Windward Ministry, Ministries, yes. and you've been to over you've been to over 40 countries, 47 countries, yeah. 47 countries preaching the gospel, putting the reality of the kingdom on display, seeing souls saved, souls healed, delivered, and and raising up more than a hundred churches as well. Yeah. Well done. And today you're going to share with our audience the key that God helped you discover that you'd already been doing lots of great works in the kingdom and seeing fruit, but this key took you to a whole nother level of the supernatural cooperation of the kingdom with you, or maybe a better way to put it is you with it, to see an explosion of fruit and miracles and more. So tell us a little of your history and background so our audience can get to know you. I actually was born in Bogota, Colombia, South America, right and uh, my parents were missionaries uh, for over 50 years in South America and Mexico, and uh, I come from generations of ministry, so right I on. grew up in the Word, yeah. I had amazing parents and grandparents, and uh, and just love the Word of God. Right on. And uh, you know, one thing, you talk about a key, I think, uh, you know, we've always talked about that Jesus Christ is the key, mm -hmm. we, he, he unlocks the door, but what I've noticed and experienced in my own life is there's a key to get in a door 
and then there's more doors. Oh, and, yeah. And so there's more keys. Yeah. And I think, I really do believe that the Lord wants us to, to in, in the key that he gave us through the death and resurrection right. of Jesus Christ, our living Lord and Savior, it opens a door into a kingdom, a supernatural yeah. realm that, that for years growing up in a traditional, uh, very Bible believing, but not supernatural in any way, but Bible believing, Bible believing, uh, growing up in that traditional lifestyle. Yeah. And even my Bible schooling and seminary was traditional. Um, it, 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 I felt like partway through our ministry, uh, I felt something was lacking that I was seeing happening right. in the Bible, but it wasn't happening in my own life. Right. And so right. I, I, I'm, I'm excited. And sometimes we think, well, you know, you got to be rooted in the word. You can't be too focused on the, the supernatural and the experiential stuff. But what I love what you just said, you were completely rooted, grounded, and continue to be. You're, the word's your plumb line. The word's mm -hmm. your focus. Amen. But when you focus on the word, you see the supernatural. And Jesus says it. And our audience, I know you guys are amazing. It's easy to talk with you about the supernatural. You embrace it. You see it. But Jesus says we'll do the works that he did. Amen. Because he goes to be with the Father. It's all for his glory. It's all focused on him. It's all to put on display how real he is. But we both know Patricia King very well. I love what she says. <laughs> if you took the supernatural aspects out of the Bible, It'd be a pamphlet, not a book. Mm -hmm. So we're to be moving in the supernatural. And um, you saw a measure of it. But then when the key that is Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit helped highlight something mm -hmm. to you, you saw an explosion. So share a little bit about that. My wife and I were married in 1988 and 31 years ago. And I thank the Lord. Right on. It's a beautiful marriage. And our kids all love Jesus. They're right all serving on. God and serving in the ministry. It's a wonderful thing. Um, she came from a traditional background. I came from a traditional background. Uh, but we knew they weren't where we were going to go when we got married. So we immediately started going to a great charismatic church, okay. beautiful church. We became elders in leadership. For 17 years, we were with the church. It was a wonderful thing. They actually sent us out as evangelistic missionaries. And uh, that, that, during that season, we started in 1996, the ministry called Wind Word, okay. which is wind of the Holy Spirit on the Word of God. Oh, I wind, love it. Wind, Word. It, we have to have them both. That's if, great, If we man. just have Word, that's what, I'd rather you focus just on Word. Right. If you're going to pick one or the right, other, because if right. you focus just on Spirit and no Word, yeah. that, that's a scary position, right? right? So, right. so in that, we were full-time ministers down in Mexico at the time. And in the year 2000, uh, we had been ministering since 96 in Mexico. Uh, uh, just going after God, preaching evangelism all over, working with the local churches, starting unity of churches and gathering, uh, and was amazing. But I was actually starting to get a bit burned out, a bit okay. tired, okay. Uh, because I was go, go, go. I yeah. uh, had our young kids with us. And uh, in the year 2000, uh, around September, okay. I, I thought, you know, in probably in part of my burnt out stage, I'm mm -hmm. like, God, I read your word, I study the word, I preach the word, but how come I'm not experiencing some of the word? Right. Like, I, I, I'm experiencing the foundations of the word, but what about this other level? And so I started actually doing a study in, on the supernaturals, especially in the angelic realm. Right on. And, uh, and I realized that there's over 300 references wow. of the angelic in 31 of the 66 books. That's amazing. And so I started, almost half the books of the Bible the, have angelic activities. Some sort of angelic activities right in it. And I, I thought, my goodness. And so I actually was so concerned convinced uh, that I need to learn about this and go after this, not worship angels. Right, that is right. absolutely not right. But there's a supernatural realm yeah. that Christ opened the key up, yep. you know, in Colossians 3, verse 1 to 2, it says right in the Bible, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Right. Well, what's above? Uh, there's got to be some yeah. supernatural Come component on. here where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Right on. Well, here we are evangelizing, going after it, doing the works of the ministry. But I was really more focused on, on what God wanted to do in people's lives through, through, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, helping build the local churches, helping bring unity. Yep. But I wasn't having the supernatural encounters. We were okay. actually operating in the prophetic, these gut feelings, but I wasn't having these supernatural encounters. And so I told my wife in the year 2000, plus my kids, they were yep. just little ones. And I said, guys... I'm going to go after this. Okay. I'm going to pray and fast until God opens my eyes supernaturally. Okay. If, if angels were seen in the Bible, 
I should be able to see the supernatural with my eyesight, yep. be, if not more, right. in the new covenant. Right, right. And, it, right. and, and angels just weren't old covenant. Right. They were in the gospels oh, as well, too. So uh, I told them I'm going to pray and fast. And so that's what I did. I, I committed to a straight water fast and committing mm -hmm. to two to four hours every day in prayer, which right for me, on. prayer is not the easiest to spend two, four hours. My yeah. wife's an intercessor. Yeah. Me, I sort of ask God and expect an answer. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, you know, I think, so, and, and as you well know, we were talking about this, sometimes the, uh, the, the topic of angels can be a little bit controversial, yeah. but I love what you said. None of this is about worshiping the angelic, not at all. But Jesus, I look at, not only does the word promise us that angels are assigned to us to minister us as the heirs of salvation in Hebrews, but I always look at when Jesus was being tempted in the, in the desert. At the end of that, an angel was sent to minister to him. And I think... If he, on our behalf, needed a little angelic ministry, how much more do we, on his behalf in the earth, need it? Exactly. And so I think, I, I just want to encourage you guys, that as I've gotten to know Brent, none of this is about focusing on angels, worshiping angels, no. but it is about saying, Lord, we want everything you have mm -hmm. for us. And you saw this realm open to you because of the key of, you saw something in the word about the renewing of your mind. Absolutely. And share about that and share that how that helped open all this, because you mentioned prayer and fasting, and that's an important key, Absolutely. a great tool, yeah. but it was with the prayer and fasting, Absolutely. but it was the renewing of the mind that specifically helped Absolutely. open this realm. Uh, Romans uh, 12, verses 1 to 2, uh, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm. holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I process this. I beseech you, it means I, I am begging you, I'm asking you, I'm commanding in any way that I can. Uh, I want, you need to, uh, you know, uh, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, mm. holy and acceptable to God, and that is your reasonable service. And I started to realize my reasonable service was not evangelism, my reasonable, or, or teaching or preaching, my reasonable service was to pre present my body or yeah, a living sacrifice awesome. to Him. So my first act of service in this new covenant uh, was to actually present myself holy and acceptable to him. That's and good. then verse two makes sense. And do not be conformed to this world. This is an explanation of how yep. we do this of verse one. Okay. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. And so as I read through this and studied this and prayed into it, I realized Actually, my first act of service for yeah. God is to present myself holy. How do I do that? Renew my mind. Right. Because I can't make myself holy. Right, right. Jesus opened right. the door for holiness in my life. Yeah. He, he, he pardoned our sins on the cross um, and, and forgave us all these sins. And resurrection gave us everlasting life. But I look at it and I say, how do I, how do, I do this? By renewing my mind. It says so very clearly. I love this because I'm looking in my New Living Translation and it says, let God transform you into a new person by the renewing of the mind. There you so go. this isn't self-effort. This no. isn't I'm going to read more no. to get more. No. This is allowing your mind Absolutely. to be renewed so that God That's will transform it. you into the fullness of who you already are. That's it. That's and awesome. that co-labors, it co-works, it co-labors, it co-connects, however you want to word it, with identity, who you yes. are as sons and yes. daughters. If we don't under, if we're living orphans, orphan lifestyles, we'll never understand this. But as we yeah. get into the love of the Father as a son, as a daughter um, of Him, it it, it, and we start to open our minds to the fullness of who he is and why he created us, something starts to transform. Right so it on. took me three months okay. I, I, of prayer and fasting. I, I thought two or three days. Right. Three days go right. by. I'm dying. I, right. I, love, I like food. <laughs> And I'm just on water. And I'm still oh. ministering every yeah, single night. Right, I'm still right, out there. Right. You know, we had projector and video screen and, and generators in mm. the remote deserts of Baja, yeah. little villages where there's no electricity, no water. So we're go, go, go. And after seven days, I'm pretty much dead as far as I'm concerned because I haven't eaten. I'm just drinking water. My wife's loving it because I'm losing weight. You know, but uh, for me, I'm literally burning right, out. And so right. I had to shuffle a bit. I went to Daniel yeah. fast, everything. Anyways, after three months, so December of 2000, Three months after I started, I, I'm actually frustrated. I come back from a ministry. I'm exhausted. I'm burnt out. I, I, go, to, I go to bed. Uh, it's late. It's probably about one in the morning. My wife's sleeping. My wife's uh, such an amazing woman. Mm. She has the gift of sleep. 
Right she on. puts her head in the pillow, oh, and right bam, on. she's out. Me, I process. I'm, I'm and so way. I'm lying in bed, and way. Robert, I literally am verbalizing out loud, and I'm angry at my wife mm. because she can <laughs> sleep, and I'm not, and I need to get up at four in the morning. Right. You know? And in this time frame, I was forcing my mind uh, to... to be in his presence when I fall asleep, which isn't that hard, just pray, right. and you start falling right, asleep, right, right, you know, right. and then wake up in his presence. So the first thought of every morning had to be in his presence. Okay. If it was about the ministry or yeah. this and that, I doubled my prayer time, which oh, killed me. Wow. And so here I am, and I'm actually frustrated at my wife, and I'm like, God, I quit. I'm going to give up. I, I, we're going to pack our truck and trailer up, and we're going back into America and Canada. I'm finished with this. We'll start business again and go back to that. And I, after I rant and rave, and I'm really condensing the testimony, yeah, yeah. after I rant and rave, I hear this voice. And I'm hoping I'm yelling loud enough to wake my wife up. You know, <laughs> it's a terrible thing, but I hear this voice. Wait, just before you get to what the voice tells, uh, tells you, <laughs> I want you guys to catch this because it's important. And thank you for being so real. <laughs> He's not hyper-spiritualizing it. He's being real. And I want you to catch that along the way, he felt the need to adjust the fast. He went into it thinking it's going to be this way for however long. Mm. And I believe God gave you wisdom so you could continue to do what you were doing. It wasn't a compromise. But then along the way, he felt like nothing was happening. Nothing was changing. The only fruit manifesting at first was frustration and a bit of a hissy fit. <laughs> Exactly. So I want to encourage you. I can so relate to yeah. that. I've had the same thing happen. I feel, what am I even doing this for? Nothing's working. But you see the fruit down the road. So I want to encourage any of you that have started on a, something like this and felt like it's not working. I feel less spiritual, not more spiritual. Or you've been thinking, I want to do it, but I don't know if I can do it. That God will lead you. And whatever comes up, I think is a good thing because sometimes he's getting things up so they can come out. That's so it. all right, now. Now, you, you, you yell out, and the voice speaks to you, and what does the voice say? It was a voice that oh, had sounds of thunder, mm -hmm. lightnings, rushing rivers, but yet a peace that passed all understanding. Mm -hmm. I knew that it could kill me. Wow. But yet I knew it loved me so much it never would think of killing me. Mm. And the voice says... Brent, what have you been asking me for? I said, I was so angry, Robert, at the time, mm -hmm. I honestly couldn't remember. Oh and I'm gosh. like, what, what do you mean, what, about, what, are you, what am I asking you for? Uh, you know, well, well, you know, and I, was, I had just finished ranting at my yeah. wife, who actually never woke up, you know? And, and, and I'm like, well, you know what? Um, um, oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. So you would open my eyes supernaturally yeah. to see your supernatural realm. Right. And that voice said, then sit up and look around. And I sat up in my bed, and I looked down the hallway. We left a little nightlight on for the kids to find the bathroom. Yeah. And Robert, I saw things to this day I don't understand. Wow. Both good yeah. and evil. And I didn't understand it. I watched for probably two and a half hours, and then I fell asleep. Goodness. I woke up the next morning, told my wife and kids something happened, and everything shifted. And it was three months in. Three months okay. in. Everything Three months shifted. in, the year uh, that ended up December 2000, and everything shifted. I started seeing things, and I would say, do you see that, that person over there? And everyone would look, oh, no. Right. And so things started, I would see, I believed to be the angelic realm, yeah. but others couldn't see it. My wife could feel the presence yes. when they came close. Yes. And it led me into areas, I remember us taken uh, uh, in the early years of uh, like literally the second and third year of Bethel School of Supernatural yep. Ministry. Yep. I took, you know, tons of kids down in missions, kids into, uh, uh, into, into Mexico and releasing them and encounters would start to happen. Uh, one of the encounters that happened just literally shortly after that uh, was we released, I prayed over the, the Bethel students, released them in downtown Tijuana, Mexico, which is a very dangerous area. And on my way back to the, to the car, the driver went and got the car running to go get the car yeah. left me standing on a street corner and there's a group of gangbangers yeah. right across the street yeah. and one of them look they're all looking at me but one starts walking over to me and I'm thinking I'm, I'm actually in a bad place right here. this right. is a violent area right. of Tijuana I'm mm -hmm. in a bad place and he comes up to me and he starts he starts swearing 
and he's telling me to get my bleep, mm -hmm. bleep, bleep Jesus out mm -hmm. of, you know, this city, and this is his city, and he's swearing his head off at me. He's angry. He's a little shorter than I am. He's angry. He's probably about 25, 27 years mm -hmm. old. And I, lit, I saw teardrops mm -hmm. tattooed right. Right down his eyesight, yep. you know, and in legit, right. that means something. Yep. Exactly. And so he's yelling. And you know what, Robert, everything I wanted to do was to actually say, hey, I'm sorry, I'm right. leaving your city, right. you know, leave it alone. But that's not what happened. Okay. This supernatural eyes opening gave me a, 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 a voice that I wouldn't have thought I would have done. Wow. And, and he's yelling and swearing at me, get out of my city. And I said, but, but I'm here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because your city needs Jesus, the love of Jesus. And he's like, be quiet. You know, he's getting madder and madder. And he's saying, I'm going to kill you. And I said, but if you kill me, I'm still going to love you. And wow. Jesus is going to love you. And shut up. I'm going to, you know, and he's yelling and swearing it literally swearing his head off at me and he's like I'm going to I'm going to take you out right now and I said but if you do my wife and my little kids are going to still love you and cuz I'm going to heaven I'm going to be praying for you in wow. heaven and they're going to pray for you on earth and I'm I'm thinking why am I saying this right. like I can't believe this is coming out of my mouth right, right now right. and he gets so angry he reaches behind himself yeah. and he pulls out this pistol <laughs> now I, I enjoy I enjoy guns I'm a hunter right. I live in right. Canada I'm a hunter yeah. and uh, I'm looking at it's like a stainless steel Smith and Wesson revolver and he's just it into my oh. forehead. It actually hurt when he pushed oh. it in. And he says, I'm going to, you know, I'm like, yeah, but if you kill me, like at that moment, wow. all I wanted to do was say, I'm sorry yeah. and walk away, right. but I couldn't. It kept wow. coming out. And, and I said, but, but Jesus is going to love you and I'm going to love you too. Wow. And I'm going to heaven. And, 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 and he says, quiet, quiet, quiet. And then he pulls the trigger and it goes click. And I watched the revolver spin once. And I went, and he looks at his gun, shoves it back into my forehead. It actually cut my forehead. Wow. Blood starts running down my forehead. And he goes, click, click, click. Three more pulls. So four pulls in total. And I'm watching this revolver turn in. Yeah. And nothing happens. He Oof. looks at his gun. And he throws it to the ground, falls to his knees. Wow. And I lead him to Jesus right on the spot. Come on, Lord. He later, awesome. his, his team comes to, to our, our ministries, yeah. and, and four more have received Jesus, and he then leads us into other gang territory because this gang was more powerful than the other one, and leads us as we preach the gospel into territory that I wouldn't have gone into before. Right and so on. I look at this, but when at the end of it, when he received Jesus, he's crying, I'm hugging him, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and I said, hey, like, dude, you can't leave your pistol on right. the ground, and oh yeah, I better get my bleep, wow. bleep, bleep gun. We give grace. Absolutely. He just got saved. Brand new he, his language hadn't changed, yeah. but he got saved. And I, uh, my curiosity. And so I said, like, dude, was, is there bullets in there? Who the bleep bleep do you think I am? Yeah, and he opens right. it up. Six, six cartridges fall out. Wow. They look good, yeah, all right, new, right, not rusty. Right. I look at them, and four of them are center punched. Wow. But none of them fired. Not one of them fired. I tell you what. Wow. I tell you what. It transformed things in our lives and wow. our ministry. And, uh, and so I, you know, just having that ability to understand that there is a supernatural realm. Right. Many times where I've traveled into countries where it is not good to go to or yes. areas of a right. city, right. I actually start seeing supernaturally the army that is for us is greater than the army against us. So you can be bold because you know that's exactly. awesome. You know, one of the things I love about this testimony, Brent, is how willing you were to be real, like we, we talked about. Um, you, didn't, you didn't do it perfectly, but you cooperated with the perfect one who did it on your behalf. There you, go. you didn't earn something by praying and fasting or reading or crying out, renew my mind. You cooperated with God, who we looked in Scripture. He's the one transforming, bringing about the transformation or bringing you into what you already had so you could see it in a greater way. I love his answer to you when he spoke. It was, well, then sit up and look around. Exactly. And guys, I'm not going to pretend to theologically understand all this. What I know is we don't earn anything from God. He's given everything to us through his son. I don't fully understand why sometimes it opens up easier for others. What I know is God is large. He's in charge. He's sovereign. He knows exactly what he's doing. And there's a blessing. We, we get excited about the promise. There's a blessing in the promise, but there's a blessing in the process. Yeah. And the process is individual. And if you're hungry for this, I want you to know God 
God has given it to you, and he's got a blessing beyond opening your eyes, which he'll do. He has a blessing in the process of bringing you into that as well. And that's what I see in you, Brent, is it's not, because I, I, I've gotten to spend some time with you here lately. There's no boasting in you. There's no, I see these things. It's almost hard to pull these stories out of you because you have so much awe of God doing it and knowing that it's for his purposes and his kingdom. But having said all that, because you are one who it wasn't naturally there, because sometimes we think with seers, they're born that way. Right. You know, I'm a feeler. It's very easy for me to feel mm -hmm. the heart of God, feel the things going on Which in the spirit. Which feeling is seeing the yes. kingdom. And My you wife's a feeler. That, right. She feels things, sometimes the presence of this, before I see them. Yes. But what I'm getting out of this is that doesn't mean I'm only a feeler. Right. It means that's a naturally way that I'm wired. It's easy for me to receive. But this is renewing my hunger to see more in the spirit and to realize I can have this too because Jesus has given us everything. But for the viewers, whether it's from your specific process or encouraging them, how can they cooperate with Holy Spirit leading them to cooperate with the renewing of the mind and the transforming into the new creation they are. Do you find it's usually the same things, the word, prayer, fasting, or is it individual for each person and they simply have to seek God for that? Lose your mind. <laughs> Lose your mind. What does that look like? For me, my Bible school training, all the years I studied the word, I actually had to lose my own understanding okay. of the word. Okay. So it doesn't mean the word changed. It, that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the foundation of the word is we have to stand on the foundation of the word. Okay. But what I started to do, what I did in my life for many years was um, get, try to create an understanding of what was going to happen or what it looked like or this and that, which is called theology. Okay. Theos, or halia, is man's interpretation or man's study of the word. So y your theologies probably have changed throughout your life of living with God. No, I'm not talking foundations. Yes, I'm talking you. secondaries, you. Yep. you know, of scriptures and different aspects. So how you worship now versus how you worship, you know, 30 years ago, yeah. um, how you read one scripture and it meant something to you 20 years ago, you read that same scripture and it acts a whole different context of yes, scripture right. in it, but yes, the same scriptural yes, foundation. That's good. The, the Bible never changes. His word is alive. It's a living word of God. So we need to find life. That's good. And so sometimes we get so wrapped up in knowledge, but we forget wisdom. And wisdom, mm. wisdom is taking knowledge and using it wisely. Right. So Jesus was known as the man of wisdom. Yes. He had great knowledge. He knew the word. He studied the Torah. He knew it back to back. But using it wisely is what gave him knowledge, okay. gave him wisdom. Right. So right. I looked at it and realized, wow, I've got lots of knowledge. And I think I'm being wise, but there's a, there's a gift all around us that I wasn't unpacking. Mm. I didn't open to it. He, he's there. It's there right now. There's a supernatural realm. I learned more about demonic mm. and the fear to fear demons and to fear that that's right. what I learned. Right, right. Don't open your mind or the devil will right. come in, you know, but the reality is, is that's actually not true. Open your mind and God will come in yes. unless your thoughts are evil. Then, right. the, then you're opening the door to the devil. Yeah. And so that's what I had to grab the understanding and realize that I had to, I had to change my mindset and understanding of what this might look like. Okay. And I truly believe, yes, prayer and fasting, it was to bring me into the attitude, what, uh, what I call the attitude of a fast. So it okay. was really more about breaking my mind down right. than it was about demanding something. I wasn't demanding something. I, when I said, I will pray and fast until you open my eyes, I, I prayed that, I said that to God. I, I sound like I'm demanding something from God, but the reality is, is when I demand, it's like God saying, well, you've already got it. Yes, exactly. You're it's, just not experiencing it. You're not stepping into it because yes. what is the only thing keeping us from the supernatural understanding? Right. Between our ears. Yeah, for you, it was that strong statement. For me, it tends to be, I pray through the Bible with a heart of thanksgiving. And what I mean is my prayer would be, thank you, Lord, that you have opened my eyes. Exactly. Thank you, Lord, that you are bringing me into a greater manifestation Absolutely. of spiritual vision. And it's all, whatever Absolutely. our individual wiring is, yep. agreeing with God has yep. already done to see a greater manifestation. Absolutely. Okay, we've got about 
two minutes left, do me a favor, look into your camera, and as Holy Spirit leads, pray for our audience, whether it's for their eyes to open because we can freely give what we freely received, or a grace to go through the process God has for them, whatever you're feeling, Brian. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for Amen. each one watching right now. Um, Lord, I pray that they don't try to open their eyes like someone else sees. What they do, Father, is they actually just humbly come into you in another level, another realm, Father, as a son, as a daughter of the King, knowing your identity, our identities through Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord God, that there will be a moment, even right now, maybe just put your hands on your eyes if you want and watching this right now and, and just say, Lord God, renew my mind some more. Because our minds will constantly need to be in the process of being renewed our whole life on earth. Renew our minds some more, mm -hmm. Father. Open my eyes. Open my ears. Open my heart. Open every, my senses, Lord God, mm -hmm. to an increased revelation of your presence and of your supernatural realm, Thank Father. You, Lord. We are looking at the things above, not focusing on the things of this earth. You're a good God. Every day is a good day, Father. And we choose the joy of the Lord as our strength, Father. We choose the victory of joy in us. Not happiness, but joy that yes. leads us to happiness, Father. And right now, Lord God, I thank you for what you're doing in the eyes of, the yeah, of us into the supernatural realm. That eyes are beginning to open. Ears. I even see miracles starting to happen right now as you're touching your eyes. I even see a back starting to be healed in Jesus' name, sciatic nerve of some kind in Jesus' name be healed. There's many miraculous things that are happening right now in the viewers as you watch this right now. And so we thank you. We, we bless you, Father. Mm. We thank you, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our living mm. Savior. We bless you Oof. in Jesus' name. Amen. Ooh, amen. Brent, thank you so much for that. Thank you for being here. And thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us for another Heroes Arise. And we're believing with you for all of this realm to open up for you because God wants to do even greater things through you. You know, every show we start the same way, but we start it that way because it's the, it's the declaration Holy Spirit gave us to declare over you on every show. You matter, you're important, you have a key role to play for the kingdom and the earth. So we're believing that through Brent, you sharing your heart, your testimonies, and your anointing, that that something was imparted to you today, let us know. Email robert at uh, menonthefrontlines.com. Share your testimonies. Post them in the, the chat areas of both the YouTube channel and Facebook. Let us know what God did for you and what he's doing through you. And we will see you here for another Heroes Arise very soon.